We're gonna start off with some questions to get to know you. So, what is your favourite food? Chicken. And who cooks in your household? Tina does. Where did you go on your last family holiday? Chiquiti. To my son lives over there and our and his family, so we go over there quite regularly. And do you like summer or winter? Oh gosh, it has to be summer. You know, we come from Te Taira, it has to be summer. What's your favourite genre of music? Country and Western. If you wrote a book, what would that book be about? The amazing people I've met. Um, across New Zealand and in the, and the world. What made you want to run for council again this year? Because my passion for our community has never waned. And I think it's about, whilst I didn't win and haven't been successful in previous outings, I'm still committed to this community. And um, I just think at the from what I've read and what I know, council needs a different, different voices. Maybe people with, with the experience I offer, because I've been involved in governance roles, local, national, and international. I can bring those sorts of skills to the voice, to the table. And I just think, it's not about whether you lose, it's whether or not you're strong enough to get up again. And that's what I do. If you could wave a magic wand and change one thing in the region, what would that one thing be? It would have to be our East Coast roads, our roads, our roading, not only up the coast, but some of our rural roads, our not up there and outside of Gisborne here, just around here. They need attention and, and I think you know, well-being is about safety of our people. And if we don't look after their roads, I think we're, in, that's, we're not completing our duty of care to our community. But again, I also have to uh, realise that that takes more money than the council has. So being able to work collectively and collaboratively with others may realise that dream for our community. What is the issue that's most important to you personally? I think the key issue for me is that we have to realise that our community is diverse and bring in the diversity to the decision making table. What do you think council can do to help slow down or limit climate change? Well, why can't we do it from a community perspective? and just ask our community, let's put some trees on our properties to, to help mitigate climate change. Because to be honest, we can't afford to do the big ticket items that people are wanting. I think also we need to, if we're going to leverage, then leverage at the top end where it matters. And that's from a um, central government level. And be, just be supportive of what others are doing. And whilst people may not, you know, not agree, then respect the decisions for others. Who are our at-risk groups in the community? I think our at-risk groups are our rangatahi. You know, if we want to stop the cycle of our, some of our partner going into prisons and things like that, that's where we have to stop it. We have to nip it in the bud there. We have to be supportive of our, our, our parents and then bring out the children. We need to be aware of the housing problem we have here. We need to care about those who can't, haven't got the resource to, help, to be able to help themselves. I think that if we look at it as a bigger picture issue, I think that's, um, they are the people that we should be looking after. And how do you think we can help them? Well, I was reading, with regard to the um, RMA review, 
that um, is currently underway. I think one of the things that we should be advocating from a council perspective is to ensure that the housing supplies are available for the, you know, the housing developments that are being um, created or developed by iwi and, and, and te whaira whiti. There is a lot of empty stores in our CBD. Mm -hmm. um, what can be done about that? I think we need to shut it up, to be honest. It's not an inviting environment for anybody. Why would you go downtown when so many shops are, spaces are vacant? We need to think outside the square. Maybe it's about supporting small businesses to work as clusters in some of those stores. You know, the art people. Uh, it's a balancing act because for obvious reason the landlords want to make get their cut of it. But I think there could be a possibility of business, landlords and council working as one, as maybe looking at subsidising some of the rentals of those business houses. So we help the, uh, the emerging young business people coming in, but also support uh, the landlords so they also are not losing out. I think that's how we could do it. What are your thoughts around the amount of vape stores that we have in Gisborne? Some of our young people, particularly, is the audience that are after, see it as an aesthetic um, activity where it's quite cool to be like that. But in reality, the impact, while smoking had a bad impact, I think to some degree, so does vaping. So no, I'm not supportive of them. What do you think we can do to help in this area? Don't get me wrong, but I think to be able to draw, to find different ways of engaging with our young people. Our young people, there's not enough here in, in Gisborne and the coast to keep them, to get their interests. And... You know, when you look, there is a sport is one of the key elements or key components that entice young people to, to to participate. And I think we could be really positive in that space by helping and assisting with the costs that come with sport. What do you think are some attributes that a councillor should have? Well, those attributes that are to be transparent, be loyal, and to make sure that you are informed from your community you represent, that you realise that your role if elected is n not Tina Karaitiana going to the table, but a councillor for Taitao Fiti, and that voice must be heard. Describe yourself in one word, what would it be? Integrity and loyal.